It would be incredibly naive to believe the independent media and any resistance to the control grid has not been infiltrated by agents of the system with the goal of undermining it and discrediting it. It would be simply foolhardy to think anything else. That is a quote from Max Egan. So I'm going to begin this video with Max Egan's own words, although I discovered quote mining the other day and then I thought, well, that explains so many things, why there are so many out there that seem to be saying all the same stuff, but it's got no substance. And it's like a um, boys club that they talk to each other and prop each other up all the time. And because you're bringing out these very base issues to people, that people waking up are going to, you know, resonate with this echo of how to attain freedom. And it is an echo. An echo that has been going on for many, 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 many decades. In many countries all over the world, there have been men setting up in opposition to the control grid. And at the very core of it, they start off with, how do we get out of paying taxes on what we earn and what we produce as profit? And most of these come out as um, freedom movements, you know, sovereign, to become self-sovereign and all of these other things. Like we've had the um, OPPT, which is One People's Public Trust. Uh, I was listening to uh, a video that Max did with uh, someone that they were talking about this and how he said, you know, he supported it, it's a good idea and everything. And then I, uh, I hadn't heard of it because it was an old thing and I hadn't heard of it probably because most of the people associated with it are in jail, facing fraud charges and things like that. And that is the common vein amongst all these attempted movements to set up sovereignty as tax havens to avoid paying tax on income uh, and pretty much not declare an income, so you're not paying income tax. And when you produce business profit, to not pay money on that. Now, I wanted to get into the setup of the three-tiered system that was initiated uh, within the um, Mount Warning Eco Village system in uh, northern New South Wales. And what happened when the public promoter, who is, uh, let me just bring up the uh, thing on that. Let's get rid of that. This is the uh, public promoter along with um, Adrian Brennock, da uh, Mark Darwin have, um, there's two videos that I will put in, they can speak for themselves, so um, you know, I'm not going to speak for them. They tell you exactly how the three-tiered system is set up. They even show you a map and diagram. Now, I've gone through a lot of videos and what I intend to do is to put them together in a cohesive time flow. Um, but some of them, to actually delve in a little bit more to the issues that I'm seeing around, or well, the danger issues around these things, it does end up to be a little bit lengthy when I put them, if I put them all together. So I'm going to do them in a time flow manner and try and start so that you can follow through a story and how it unfolded and how it's come to today and why I can see what I can see and why I believe that there are very real dangers, especially for people in Australia. 
Now I've had um, people say to me, you know, I'm pulling down Max Egan. Now, l I'll get into Max Egan in a minute, but um, the only reason I'm focusing on Max Egan is, one, because I know the area personally that he's involved in, in northern New South Wales and Queensland. And he's an Australian affecting Australians. And at this time, I, I'm sorry, but you know, before 2020, his fluff was enough. But now we've hit 2020, we really need to help people out and move in the right direction. We cannot keep funneling them down this misinformation and misdirection that controlled narratives are pushing on us. And by the time I've finished going through this time flow and presenting the words that come out of their own mouths, I will, of course, give you my conclusions on it, but I'm not going to do what other people have done because it took me so long to actually cut through this video by this, what was his name? Kips, Clips. At some Irish guy or something that, oh, he wouldn't even let Max get out a phrase before he would interrupt him. It took me so long. And the only reason I did it is that because for some reason, this particular video, Max didn't want people to see. And it's not the, the truth whether you want to hear it or not, which I do also have a copy of that. And even though Max intended to leave it there when he made his um, next one on the 21st of, 21st of January, you know, he, to show how he, what he had been through, he still took it down. And the interesting thing is that even though you can, let's go and have a look, the one that I'm talking about. See here, Max Egan on Zen Gardner and Ken O'Keefe offering some clarity. Now this was back in September 2016, uh, after about four years that Max Egan had already known Ken O'Keefe, he knows Zen Gardner, and he's just um, sold Ken out and shoved him under the bus so that he doesn't get run over as well. And Zen Gardner has just come out and said that he, he's a Freemason and he's um, been involved with um, child exploitation and all these other things that, you know, pedophiles, we want to get rid of them. We do not want them in our society. And so the, the only video that I couldn't access was this one. Now click on this. It won't come up. It's disappeared. Now this is a channel that supposedly he doesn't have any control on. I mean someone else has uploaded it. And um, the other one I think the truth whether you like it or not was there too because I originally got that copy from here because he had taken it down from BitChute and um, uh, YouTube. So I found it on Alt Censored. And he must have realized it was still there too. So that one's actually disappeared. I'm pretty sure that's disappeared. Let's go and have a look. Yep, that's um, the truth, whether you like it or not, was done on the 10th. And as you can see it, and all these are clips of the same shit. It's just over and over and over and over. It's like, can you make some point about why you're repeating yourself over and over? And then he comes out with the truth trap. Yeah, well, that's actually it, isn't it? Because you think that if someone calls out, it's the wolf, you couldn't possibly be the wolf. And it's kind of a little bit, a lot of reverse psychology with Max Egan. But um, I wanted to start back with um, 
my experience. I've already done a video on um, in the alternative communities ones. If anyone wanted to go back and find out about this MK Ultra operative that um, I had. <laughs> Well, I look at it now as, you know, when I was going through all these experiences, I thought, well, you know what, good or bad, it's all experience and I learnt something and I'm sure that somewhere down the track it will be valuable experience. And I wasn't to realise until Max Egan came on the scene just how valuable this first-hand real experience is. The guy I met back in um, 2015, he wasn't bald like this, he had hair, but this is his first YouTube channel that he had. And uh, as I said, if you want to know about him, go back and look on the alternative communities videos I've done because he, uh, I've explained it in there. Now this is more in line with the guy I met where his video is three years ago. And he's got a picture of Noddy up there because, yes, he was in that. Not only is he the saviour stage, he's always been the saviour, mind you. He doesn't just, you know, but he changes it up, you know, he, um, which saviour name he is. He's got a little bit of, um, I suppose, every couple of years, as I said, when he goes in for his reprogramming, that... Um, they uh, get him to change his name, make him a little bit more different in case someone's heard him before. They think, oh, wow, he's grown and he's evolved. But he's not reaching many people. Uh, in fact, the only people he's reaching are the mental health people who are coming around <laughs> and arresting him. And I know that because of his most recent profile where he shows it, where he was taken for um, psych evaluation. And that comes from what uh, Alan told me when we were living in this community together. That uh, basically, he was a very wealthy man. He was from Western Australia. Now, when I'm saying this is his story, I don't know whether this is true or not. And the same with Max Egan. I mean, he makes it quite clear that who he is is not a real name. So if he's not going to present as a real person and he wants to hide his real name when he's not even anybody important to hide that name because of. So first of all, he creates a fake character and then he creates a backstory. So ultimately, what I'm saying here is talking about a character. I don't even know that these people are real. We know that Max Egan isn't real. And the backstory I don't know is real. I'm only talking about the backstory they give me. So Alan's backstory is that he was a rich man. He got to a certain age, which I did, uh, was probably yeah, midlife crisis time 40s, just like Max. He said that uh, his wife walked out on him when he was 40, and that's when everything changed. And uh, this guy, Alan Hamer, he... Um, had grown up kids after a certain stage that he was in charge of um, some uh, indoor parking, you know, the, the big parking complexes you get in, in cities and things like that. He had a few of them. Now, the thing is, I did actually go and do a few searches and check out a bit of his backstory, and I could find a certain amount of information to back it up. There was legal documentation to say out there that a person called Alan Hamer was associated with this parking empire. And uh, there were other documents, whether they were real or not, I don't know. So there is some uh, identification in a legal system for a personality called Alan Hamer. But of course, legal documents don't have photographs so anyone could present as that person and make up a backstory but this guy told me that uh, pretty much his whole family ganged up on him to take his money off him said he was insane and now they've taken charge of his money 
and he goes from community to community trying to keep one step ahead of the mental health system tracking him down. Now that's his story other than the one that he blurted out that day to me that I describe um, in the previous video. So already I'm getting an idea that, that um, from all the other people that I've met coming and going out of this community and besides you know I'm no spring chicken it's not like I showed up here as some bright-eyed fresh fresh teenager you know ignorant out of the farm I've already um, yeah had a, had a few life's lessons so even though I might not be confronting to people I'm a very big observer and I silently observe because you know why would you tell people that you're suspicious on them just so that they can try and hide those behaviors I think this Alan Homer knew exactly how I felt about him though I mean there he was just yeah one of the few people that I've ever met that um, I didn't like there's this energy about him that just goes against everything and as I said, that's, that's happened with two, maybe three people in my whole entire life that I get this instant stay away from me feeling. Kids, sorry, got interrupted and uh, forgot where I'm going with this recording. Um, I'll just start back up with uh, this Alan Hamer because um, this guy is pretty much around the same age bracket as the character Max Egan and I'm going to call him a character because <laughs> you want to call him anything else not a real name all right not a real name and who I am well half of who I am is about playing games and clearly the poor man had to go online to have something to do with his son. His son may not have even known that he was playing with his father online because gamer handles. Yeah, I think his was something Killjoy or something like that. He did a video, the first video he ever uploaded to his channel was watch me doing video art. That's what my son does. He's he's 25 and he's in there. He's wanting to do all that. Can't get him off the PlayStation or out of the games. And you know what? He's, he's just another man-child. I raised two kids and a man-child. And now I've got another man-child even though I got rid of the one that I had married. I've got one in my son now. So... And that's what it is when you are a real person talking about a real life because, um, you know, I don't talk about um, subscribers and Patreons and people that email me messages and things like that because I actually have a real life with real people in it. And, uh, yeah, kids that uh, test your patience. And I've been through two teenage kids and a man-child, so it's why... Yeah, you get to a certain stage where some of the comments that I've had people say about, you know, trying to defend a fake. And his backstory, um, I will get into in other videos, but um, he's no more of a character than this one, who thinks he's the Messiah and the Chosen One and he's of the tribe of Hamer and you've got to go tribal and you know treaty with the tribes but his story is a little bit different he's actually King Noddy see this he's he's King Noddy oh yes King Noddy here we go King Noddy of Nod the Black King because this white fella is like other white fellas that say they're black oh they're black because they were adopted into the tribe it's like, seriously, people, you don't need to be adop adopted into any tribe. You were born on the land, you're already tribal, so you don't need to treaty with any tribe. You're the tribe. <laughs> you know? So get together with other people that are also tribal and, yeah, 
which is everybody. Every single person on this planet is tribal. So you don't need a treaty with someone. Like they're all trying to make a claim and stake and say, this little slice is mine. Aboriginal Australia has been, you know, they, they want to take back land that they never owned. It, it's quite an astounding to me. And they're trying to do it under, well, what is it, the uh, OSTF, the Original Sov Sovereign Tribal Federation. This is, again, another thing that is trying to set up as a sovereign scheme and tax evasion, and yet enjoy all the perks of the system. Now, when I was um, on the outer in this community and I moved into the other house where there were, you know, they'd call themselves real tribal people because they're Aboriginals, um, I was virtually accepted as the acceptable, you know, sort of adopted into the tribe and honoured by their, well, seeing what they're really like. And the thing that really got me and that really puzzled me is that at that time up in um, Kakadu and Arnhem Land and all around there, the uh, tribal nations were protesting because on their sovereign land the government had taken away their um, water and power and postal service and food service and you know all these other services on native title land and I thought well that really doesn't make sense to me because if I imagine that that little bit of land that you've claimed is native title and isn't under the law of Australia, well, you're not actually part of Australia because you've set up apart from it. So if you're not part of Australia, how is it that you expect to be able to get Centrelink benefits, Medicare benefits, your services and all these other things? And then that's just that one question. But then it's the other question is that, well, if you've been fighting so hard to go back to tribal ways, um, why have you set up a community that is just an outback version of a white man's community with all the services? That isn't the tribal and traditional way. That, that is, they tell me for 50,000 years that was the tribal way. How many cars did you have? Houses live in? Water supplied? Flying doctors and postal service? And government grants thrown out the door to from taxpayers in Australia to people on native title that or even ones that are in the community that have decided no we're not going to stay on the native title land we want to become part of Australia and it's this division that they've been creating and constantly setting up and it's pretty much the male ego leading this charge you know this I've got to take charge, I've got to be dominant and I've got to beat this system and set myself up apart from it. But um, this annoying video clip that I did last night to cut out all his comments so that I could get the core message of what Max didn't want people to hear, um, what this guy was saying was spot on and he was really angry about it which is why he actually kept interrupting because he's all the points that he was making were so valid and they're so obvious to anybody that actually can see the contradictions I mean you know he kept making this big deal about how with uh, the Ken O'Keefe scam 
that how people had already come to Max and said, you know, well, we think something sus is going on. And so Max says, oh, well, leave it with me. I'll see, you know, if I can talk to Ken and find out what's going on. So he goes off to Anacapoco and has a holiday and um, for two months. And then he comes out and, you know, it's only after they have a big argument and uh, Ken is the one that actually turns around and first accuses Max of being a subverter of him stirring up the shit. And so then, of course, Max goes, and where's his little video um, story? Oh, the betrayal of Ken O'Keefe. See, this is one very key important thing here, is that he doesn't try and defend himself with so many other things, but with this, with certain things he does, because he needs people to believe him. And I can understand why this um, uh, video that I had to edit so heavily, why he did get rid of it, because, I mean, it is such a con. You know, all the classic of opening the eyes wide and talking calmly and, you know, I don't want to encourage people to, you know, poor Ken and all of this other and, you know, oh... The part when he said he was an empath, an empath <laughs> I, I thought, well, well, that just goes to to prove that anyone can say anything they want, and it doesn't have to be true. But then again, we're not even talking about a real person, because uh, Max Egan wasn't a real name. He's just a personality that was on radio for uh, quite a few years, four years, I think maybe a few more, before he he went on to video, on to YouTube and the Crow House. And it's very interesting if you think about the fact that Max Egan could actually, when he came out, could have easily been someone pretending to be Max Egan. Like, how many people I've had, I've had one person pretend to be speaking on behalf of Max and other critics of Max who, who are clearly <laughs> got thinking brain cells out there, uh, they can see through it too. There is nothing that um, Max Egan says that couldn't be uh, taken from quotes from everybody else and what I said about quote mining, I dare say there's content mining. And what brought him to fame were all these little videos, these ones. That, I'm sorry, I don't believe for one second that he, he did that. Because if his wife left him when he was 40 and he said that it, um, he wrote the book as cathartic, you know, to help him out, uh, he was 49, nine years later by the time he'd finished writing a book. As a nobody, gives it a fake name and then, what, gives it away? Well, of course you'd give it away because you're a nobody with a fake name telling a story. It's not going to mean anything until you've promoted yourself and built yourself up as is the, um, takes about 20 years according to, to Yuri's um, subversion chart. It, it's nice to have someone in there for 20 years to well and truly control the narrative and subvert it, but 10 to 15 years, yeah, that's all you really do need. But it took a few years for Max to get uh, up and out. He got um, onto American radio which uh, just recently, within the ne last couple of days, something must have happened to the American Voice Radio because that website has disappeared and it's now um, AVN, I think. I don't know why N, but yeah. But anyway, um, so this is the book that took him four year, uh, nine years to write. Now, when Max Egan wrote that, 
he's saying that he had a mental breakdown and all these other things and I hadn't looked at it and I wasn't even going to read it because I thought well I know the guy is an alcoholic and even though he he has denied that in comments on his previous channel before he got shut down I got a video of it anyway he does actually say it in a video that was uploaded a couple of days ago. He actually talks about how, you know, he's a, an alco been an alcoholic or, you know, f very big exotic or drug history. And to have gone through all of that and not be here for the final show. No, he's glad he missed his, his ride. Now, when I do examine Max Egan from the beginning of the year, he comes out to say that this event that happened in January, um, you know, a couple of weeks down the, the track, we're supposed to believe he's over it. And also, you know, it's amazing because other targeted individuals have told him it's taken years and he's just, he's just a super healer. Just like he put out the video after he broke his foot that, um, you know, amazing healing within two weeks of comfrey usage and it's like oh well I know that's bloody bullshit to begin with because you know what in the community when the guy that uh, ignored my advice about flattening out the uh, muddy hoof prints before they hardened and people tripped in them when he tripped in them he used comfrey poultices and everything and it was useless he ended up going to the the chemist and uh, getting painkillers because <laughs> good old nature wouldn't work and then uh, six weeks later Max Egan's on a show and rather than saying how incredible you know bounce back he had like he did two weeks later after breaking his foot and having it smashed open that it might need pins and in two weeks later the Comfrey's done such a good job that he could he's he's almost walking on it normally won't be you know it'll take a little bit but six weeks after the event he's oh no you know I'm getting there it's like yeah that's actually the real story isn't it because the comfrey didn't work and neither would it work about going down to the hospital and getting all those um, paying thousands of dollars for x-rays and all the other services and the moon boot when you break the foot but then again I suppose you've got enough um, Bitcoin donations and Patreons and well how many people donate contribute to the pipe crow house and if you go to Patreon you've got options of up to one to a hundred Last time I looked, it was either 462 or 482 something patrons per month, and all these lovely places where you can. And look at this one direct deposit too, bank account details, so that you can put it in directly. And who is it for? The account name is the In La Cash Foundation. I don't know how that could actually be because to open up a bank account you actually have to have um, a birth certificate or be a registered business and the In Lakesh Foundation is not a registered business or um, charity. And the Full Circle Project that when uh, he started talking about it, I'm pretty sure it was at the beginning of the, the year when people said you know what about the full circle project project that's an option and he said oh no that's all but fallen th fallen through you know because nobody wanted to participate and I'm thinking hang on you've done videos for quite a few years saying how many communities are connected worldwide but you know I just let it slide so but then uh, yeah going back and checking all the little things that he said so the full circle project would you like to contribute to the Full Circle Project to the In La Kesh Foundation here? Oh, we're not contributing to the Foundation or the Full Circle Project. We're contributing to Max. 
And then I discovered another little interesting thing about Max too, when he says he doesn't do commerce. Now I understand why he says he doesn't do commerce either. Because when you're buying a t-shirt, you're not buying it. It's a donation. It's a tax evasion for monies received so he doesn't have to declare that income. Now ultimately, that is fraud. He's accepting monies, not only for a foundation that isn't registered, but he's presenting that and he's doing it under a false name. If I had to convince people any more that there is something fraudulent or fake about this person, everything, you don't believe me, go on to the Australian Business Register because all charitable institutions have to be registered there too and they will make reference to go to these registers um, where I've actually looked up the Full Circle Project and I can guarantee you, you can look it up yourself, donations, oh, let's go back, donations do not take you, whoops, to this, to Max's personal bank account. Max Egan, who doesn't actually exist, and the In Lakesh Foundation that doesn't show up as a registered charity or non-profit organisation. And the interesting thing too is that uh, just before Max Egan had his beam of light experience, he went on to the, uh, was it Richie Allen show? I think it was Richie Allen or it could have been Jordan, no it wasn't Jordan Maxwell. I mean they're, they're all boys from the same infiltrators club anyway. But anyway, the show, um, I think it was Richie Allen. He went on and it was a two hour video um, radio show. And for the first hour on the 9th of January, someone called Robert Inlakesh did a talk. He's from Press TV. And his talk was all about Palestine and freeing Palestine and all of that. And you see, the thing is that when you go to Palestine, like uh, Max Egan did with Ken O'Keefe, to try and set up the set up the world citizen contract and the global citizen type thing, what they've done is try and go into a country to see whether they can apply tax evasive laws there under the guise of we're not going to pay taxes to the system because we don't support war. And this has come out of Max Egan's mouth quite a few times. We're not going to pay taxes because we don't want to support war. And the whole purpose of the uh, taking in donations from people and Max Egan bringing in people to give those donations and help out was to employ a solicitor to see if it could be legally done to avoid paying taxes and to set up apart from the system. And they found out no. And anywhere that actually is explaining to you, yes, we can do it, the only thing they're telling you is that we can do it until we're caught. Now, there's a long history of tax evasion and I'm pretty sure that the Bundy Ranch siege was over tax evasion as well where they tried to set up sovereign and this is our sovereign land, we've got our guns and we don't have to pay taxes to you. You're criminals and we're not going to support criminals. Well, you can sprout as many words as you want. It is not going to stop the government going after tax avoiders. You know, you're their income. And there is so much tax evasion going on in these... Um, projects to set up sovereign and separate from the system that you're in. And whilst Max has said so many times, you know, you're a coward by running away, um, you need to stay in the system that you're in and fix it, he's never participated in Australia. 
he's tried to participate in another country where he can get tax perks and use the guise of, well, I'm trying to help the poor people of Palestine. And that's why all of these out there are trying to help Palestine. You know, because then you're thinking, oh, these people care. No. If you all look at, if you look at them all, they're guys. They want to help Palestine. They want to set up sovereignty. They do Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, just so you can support them in their fight against tyranny in Palestine to free the people. It's a con. It's all a con. And there are many doing it. And the ones that have got the most subscribers. And in the videos I will introduce, you will hear um, PK tell his own story about um, what he knows about Max Egan and his personal experiences with him and all the things that um, and I will also introduce um, Ken O'Keefe's counters on Max Egan's because you see there are very loud voices in the alternative media, media that have been protecting Max Egan's character or his reputation as that persona of Max Egan, whoever the person is that may be playing that character, they protect him and they do everything they can to bring down any, you know, oh poor Max got sucked in again, oh he got sucked in again, oh he got sucked in again. Well you should remember that if that is the story that they want you to believe, he got sucked in again. There's a video that he did in August and in June this year, in 2020, where he's pretty much saying, trust me, because I trust these people. Now the thing is that, who are you trusting, Max Egan? You're not even a real person that can be held accountable for any of the choices that you make and recommend to other people. Sorry, more interruptions. But that's the way it goes. I've completely forgotten where I was. I think I've pretty much uh, sort of got across too. I, I've hoped I've, I've made that connection somewhere anyway in what I've said about how these two Australian males in the same age group. Alan Hamer, as I said, whether that's his real name or not, no idea. And uh, Max Egan. They're very, very similar. Even the backstory of um, the free gypsy spirit, you know, being the bit of a muso, you know, breaking down the barriers with other people and going out like this guy Alan Hamer the only real benefit he had in the community where we were is that he would go into Nimbin meet people and bring them back and see if yeah let's see if we can get some money out of these people and con them into to investing in the community uh, the guys at this community aren't very good salesmen but I tell you what, their mates down the road, that's a whole different ball game altogether. And Max Egan is connected all to it. He's done three videos in 2020 that bring Gunham and the Nightcap community and the tribal ways and treaty with the tribe and sovereignty and pushing it to, as an alternative to people. So I'm not giving up any information that he hasn't already promoted and it has worked. He has, um, because as I said, I sent an email to find out and the girl that answered me back said it took days to answer back because they had so many responses. And I'm thinking, oh, you had so many responses, it takes days. or do you only work one day a week you know I mean but the thing is 
I know that there would be enough responses that people will start buying in. And um, the response that I got from this woman gave me a PDF and a, a few other details about people involved with it. And um, I'll share that information more because uh, I also got some emails from Max Egan and um, uh, you know I'm sorry but people just should know when to close their mouth I know people could say that about me and they have a lot of people have told me to shut up and I have for a lot of years but now's the time then I'm not going to shut up and people are ready to hear what I've got to say. Because if you don't like the truth that I'm saying, push the stop button. Go somewhere else. I am not forcing anyone to listen to this or to believe what I'm saying. I'm just trying to connect some dots and show people how I connected those dots. And I'm not doing it because, oh, I've gone online and it says so. I've lived these experiences. I've met these people. I know what they're like. And at the same time, Mark Darwin is doing his Freedom Summits. I'm in this community. This is the same area I'm in at this time. But I was more focused on that community and trying to get that up and running. I did hear at times because um, one of the guys at the the community had his little coffee van and likes to think himself a bit of a muso and um, he uh, went over and set up at Byron and the funny thing is that uh, yeah it's all this thing about Byron too it's like why are you going over to Byron you know and I've already said about what I think about Byron anyway so I'm not going to go down there but um, so you say, well, you can't connect Max Egan to any of these people. Oh, yes, I can, because at the Freedom Summits, look at this, Max Egan and Mark Darwin discuss Gaza. Now, Mark Darwin is the one that if you look at the uh, Nightcap um, video, documentary video that I've linked to in the past, Mark Darwin is one of the named people in the Mount Eco warning scam that this Julie, Gillian Norman was sued over because this poor age pensioner got ripped off for her money and so did other people. And it's interesting to hear how um, the developer um, of one project and the promoter of it, who was Mark Darwin through the Freedom Summits, um, Mark Darwin, yeah, he fell out. He ended up doing a runner to the UK. So they put someone else out in front of the development, along, along with Adrian, to become the public face and promoter. And uh, changed the name slightly so that, you know, there was... Uh, well, we've got a legally different name. Now, the thing is that the incorporated association behind it is still all the same people. And even uh, Gunham says that in the video Max shows us. You know, he says, well, yeah, they were involved with the other project. And he also says out of his own mouth, he says, look, they hurt you over there. That's them that hurt you. You know, here's your money back. Now take it and go. But no, no, you want to castigate us. It's like, what? This is what I kept saying to people about if these people had not been involved in both projects, why would the person that's claiming at NICAP right now actually say, we offered you your money back. We said, here, take it. And you said, no. That was an admission that the same people, because as I've said, if you weren't the one that received the money, why would you offer it back to her? And if you had offered it 
to her five times in open court. I've already said that argument. Remedy. That's what the court is for. Seeking remedy to put you back into a place before you went through that. If she was given her money back, offered it at least once, that was remedy. To say five times goes with the other lie or misinformation. They probably offered her money back five times, not in open court, and probably half her money. So it's a half truth. But well, you won't know any different. You won't check out the court documents. You won't see that even in the court documents they went to all this trouble to get rid of all this stuff off the internet so that nobody could search this scam. And yet the scam is detailed in the court documents. Even the court saying about how this uh, setup that Mark Darwin's got is really shonky. And you know, you can look the court documents up and read this for yourself. It's all public record. You don't need any YouTube videos or censors to stop you from that information. So yes, Mark Darwin ended up with this fallout with this Gillian Norman, ended up in the UK, but others still involved with the uh, nightcap community now, um, the developer, as I said, brought in others that were still involved in the project behind and unnamed, brought them out to the front and were named. So they're all been involved in it. And this is where Gunham says, oh, you know, the court couldn't get this woman, couldn't figure it out that this isn't the same as that. It's like, no, she couldn't prove it. Because that's, the, I know exactly she was telling the truth, but she couldn't prove it under the conditions of the court. And how this poor woman and all these other people that got ripped off, now she's getting blamed for causing all that trouble and causing all the others to lose their money as well. And that's not out of my mouth. That's what Gunham says. You know, it's her fault. And even the journey that they talk about, you know, to develop this whole nightcap community, four and a half years. Well, four and a half years? That would put you back to when Mount Eco, Mount Warning Eco Village was still in operation. And the battle started, wasn't it? You thought it had it all figured out because of these because of these videos where's his oh, I've gone off it again haven't I oh but yeah he thought he had it figured out because he'd done that now that video was actually done a few years ago this is the helpful little site it's the only thing you can actually find about it and the two videos that I'm going to put in sync and bring this together. This is um, Adrian Brennock on the left there and Mark Darwin on the right, developer promoter. And this is a Freedom Summits com uh, conference by Mark Dar Darwin. Now on the video it says it was in Sydney, but uh, no, they actually say they're in the Nimbin uh, town of Nimbin and I don't know where that is in Nimbin maybe it's in a school library or something I don't know um, it doesn't look like a building I know in Nimbin put it that way but they make reference to it they say they're in Nimbin they're talking to people that have come in they've heard about this um, community and this is um, these two videos are an edit of the two-hour conference which explains the legal structure and setup, which I'm sure if um, Gillian's lawyers um, <laughs> had had access to and understood as well as ATSIC when they did their investigation, maybe the uh, court results may have been a little bit different. But that's also another thing that Gunham said, that a lot of the problems were caused largely due because of 
um, this one person's solicitors. Now, I couldn't say that an aged pensioner who's had to get, she's gone to court and where she hasn't represented herself, or she tried to represent herself and the court said, you know what, you can't. She said, I can't afford to, to do that. So she had to go uh, get a referral for pro bono. So backwards and forwards of trying to fight this because these guys have got, um, you know, well, when you're taking in other people's money, you know, <laughs> it's not your pockets that are, that are paying to have a hassle at this woman, is it? You're just the one that is utilising the funds available. So it was not only um, Gillian Norman that was sued um, by uh, the, these people involved because of the slander and they wanted to shut her down and get rid of any, you know. His uh, truthology movement was actually found to be a scam too. So, um, yeah, let's get back to the community setup because you see um, until recently and it was actually um, the emails I received from Max that um, I'd already it had already dawned on me who actually um, <laughs> that there's two interviews with Gunham and they're on the front porch there's one interview with Dave Onigs and that's sitting out there on the porch of one of the little buildings outside. So you can clearly see who are the guests. <laughs> but it was uh, because of Max's uh, emails that, uh, okay, so the developer and pro promoter don't actually live at Nightcap. That's handy to note. Only the people of the 400 blocks that are around, well, they sent me saying it was 290,000 and I could get, uh, I could buy in um, if I got, if I applied for a discount and asked them. So I asked how I could get the discount. They said, if you settle within 30 days. Now we all know that standard settlement is two months. So ultimately, this is a push to bypass those that would use the banking system because that's going to be hard to try and justify the legal structure that they would even lend you the money. But uh, it's to bypass the legal, um, the, the banking system and the necessity of taking out loans and only appealing to those people that have actually got disposable funds that don't need to go to the bank. And once you sign up and you become an anonymous member, and if you happen to get ripped off, try and prove it to the court that they ripped you off. Who ripped you off? Ask Gillian how easy it is or how difficult it is. When you know something is one thing, when you try and prove it in a court of law, oh, you're pushing shit uphill. <laughs> you really are. You know, it's, but that's where you see, with the benefit of whoever these people were that put these videos up, thank you very much, because without the knowledge of knowing how they've set up the structure, and with the accommodation of just a couple of name changes, and thanks to the court documents, to be able to actually know what those companies were, because, uh, it's all named in the court documents. I couldn't believe it. All I had to do was read the court documents, go to the business search, look the records up, and uh, find out that, yep, there's the incorporated association or trustee where they're hiding behind. That's that setup of that. And the internal community document code of ethics behavior, the member of certificate, and the third external Mount Wollumbin Horizons, that is the only official outside of the company, but if you try and follow it back, it's all anonymous. And even in here, in these two videos, it is highlighted about how 
you can't find your way back. The little boy is bragging about how they've beaten the system, but they haven't, because it will catch up with them. There is no tax dodge that has ever survived the government. It's that simple. And it is clearly a tax dodge, because every single one of them are trying to set up in, in the legal system to legally avoid what they claim is, this is my sovereign right, this is my tribal right, I don't have to do this. But yet, you do. It's all within this system to try and separate yourself and say, I'm going to hide here. Well, even though Max Egan says, oh, you shouldn't hide, you've got to stay in your community. Never did it in Australia, never participated in Australia. Now he's saying that he's not going to hide. But he's going to stand up and you know, he's going to wake everybody else up. But, you know, do what you want. Have no stake in the outcome. You know, because it's all about death and dying and fear and being in the system and knowing how they've enslaved you and enclosed you in this jail and this, oh, all these chains that hold you down. It's just, oh, wow, how can you even think with all these weights on you? Yeah, that's what I hear when I listen to Max. So when I've researched him, it has actually been very difficult to actually listen over and over and over to the same bullshit that anyone reading that learned how to be a narrator could say. His movies are narration. His pearls of wisdom are narration. Doesn't mean shit. Where's his proof of living them? He's been sucked in by so many people, bad judge of character, and because he's dragged other people into it, they've got ripped off. And why he took down the video about Ken O'Keefe and Zen Gardner is because he feels more sorry for poor old Ken than all the people that have got ripped off by them. Them. Yes, them. A scam as uh, this uh, Irish guy called it, Ponzi scheme. They're worldwide. You know, they try to set up everywhere. And uh, as long as you try and set up in a system, you say, oh, I'm going to set up apart from the system. Well, you actually have to set up apart from the system and not by going into the system and creating a wedge. You just... It's just stupid what they're saying about treating with the tribes now. You know, don't participate in this society now, Max says. Um, treaty with the tribes. So it's okay to run away now and treaty with the tribes and not fix the society you're in. Go treaty with the tribes. Because it's not like any of these corporations that have been set up, businesses... And they talk about how it's a business, not me. All their corporate structure. If this was really sovereignty, there'd be no corporate structure. And I hope people understand that. There'd be no corporate structure. There'd be no paper. And there'd be no need to prove anything. Because you exist in your own sovereignty to begin with. We are tribal. We are all this. We don't need permission or someone to show us how to get it or to hide behind somewhere to avoid paying taxes so we can get rich off the system. And yes, rich off the system because they all still get Centrelink, they still get Medicare benefits, they still get all the benefits of the system, but don't participate in paying for any of it. They are taking off every single other Australian that has ever paid taxes. So I'm not doing this because of the, I want to help the government. I'm doing this because I want to help you. I want to help you not get ripped off. Because you will get ripped off. These guys that are running the nightcap don't even live at the community. And those that do live at the community are by the fact that they live at the community a member of the anonymous club. You can be traced 
you will be shown as fraudulent and criminal and you will go to court and you a lot of them have ended up in jail and at the top of the pyramid are the developers who won't go to jail because they think they're untouchable well they are not and I've already had my name passed on by Max so I look forward to getting at sick to do a proper investigation this time to not only show who the people are and how to identify who's related to this anonymous hidden association but where the kings at the top of the pyramid and as they say in one of these videos, um, Mark makes a joke about how AB thinks that some people are more equal than others and they laugh and have a little joke. But think about that. Some people are more equal than others. And yes, this little guy here is much, much more equal than you would ever be in the community because it's a business development and if at um, well I summed it up at they've got around 400 property lots for sale and if you round it to 300,000 which they've obviously dropped it to 290 but they were 300,000 so we've got um, 120 million dollars for a property development and community that is providing businesses with tax-free income. Hmm, a tax dodge. And the ones that are holding all this and putting it all together that started off here, yeah, had a little bit of a problem with Mark, so we shifted around the front, front players a bit and we wound up somewhere else. And uh, you don't need to find out too much about who's out front because they tell you. But uh, yeah, the um, <laughs> the Crow House holds more than just one bloody con man, doesn't it? Eh? One fake. It's got some scam artists hiding there too. That's why you're so damn secretive, isn't it? And that's how you've been able to hold each other's secrets too. Because I knew that there couldn't have been a woman living there. Because a woman wouldn't take that kind of shit. That's why, you know, men tend to have their women move out when they're aged 40. Because you know what, their man child, you, we've had enough of raising you, you haven't grown up, you're still the same kid that you were. I've given you all the chances. Sorry, I'm going to finish raising my kids on my own. It'd be a hell of a lot easier than trying to raise three. <laughs> yeah, in my case, three. I only got two kids. <laughs> As I said, man child. And this is by no means a criticism against men. Because what I've seen about how women are, have become so manipulative and controlling and younger women quite disgusted with the slip in standards and morals but then it's understandable too because the change in morals uh, the values morals and the way the education system went from actually teaching facts and figures to teaching morals and sexual preferences and things like that you know bullshit you didn't need to have the government educators tell you how to think on yeah you can understand how all the young generation are so lost and that's really good because in 2020 that whole young scattered generation are going to follow someone like Max Egan and Max Egan's going to steer them in the right direction isn't he because he's real he doesn't even have the courage to stand up and be his own person He's talking about prisons. He's created his own prison. He's hiding behind a fake name. He's hiding behind the fear of being found out 
who he really is. And he's been doing it for many years. And for those that have called him out, well, I'm not the only one. I'm not the first and I won't be the last. But I can tell you what, I am really glad he's gone off YouTube. But that's only because there's something a little bit bigger that his uh, controllers have got planned for him so he will try and reach a larger platform and get up there with David Icke. Because yes, if I was in uh, the UK, I'd be doing one on Ike. But I'm not. I'm worrying about my own backyard like we all should be worrying about our own backyard. Rooting out the weeds, cleaning the garden out and letting the flowers grow. Because if, if you let these weeds keep growing and directing the it's so typical that they've got all these young male voices that are all gung-ho and macho and yeah we think you're great and all this stuff and look where it ended up Thanos got arrested how many of them got arrested mm. solutions answers see what happens when you go charging out with good ideas and <laughs> no idea how to do it in reality <laughs> yeah well you can always solve your problem by following Nanny Max's advice and treaty with the tribes and go buy into this village but mind you there are only 400 spots and if you are accepted if your character is of agreeance to them you will be allowed to come in and be one of the very privileged few to enjoy this freedom. Well, in understanding now why the top of the pyramid and the developers are not living there, there's going to be a lot of innocent people hurt financially, eventually, eventually it will happen people you have if you buy in to NICAP you are buying into a deliberately structured fraudulent system and you will have no legal standing once you pay over money kiss it goodbye you will never see it again and you will never be able to prove who you gave it to other than if you paid through the solicitor, which was, um, what was his name, Wall, some wormy name Wall that they were involved with, who was sued by Gillian Norman. Because, um, you see, another thing that might be interesting to know, that back in 2017, the court documents revealed that this solicitor, Nor um, Wall was his last name, He's in, uh, I think, Mwoolumba or somewhere. Um, he was getting paid... Hang on, I'll just look up. Yes, he was getting paid a finder's fee of $20,000 for each person that he found and brought into the project. So um, this came up in these uh, court documents because um, Gillian Norman was not the only person that was seeking money back and another person was actually trying to get money back with her at the same time so that was at least two people that he would have got forty thousand dollars for total for bringing into the project so as i say once you pay into this your money's gone because if uh, max egan is promoting this place i dare say there's a finder's fee involved. He can turn around and go, oh, that's rubbish, that's not true. But if a finder's fee is involved, if he brings in enough people, that earns him his own lot in the community, doesn't it? And so he gets his little bit of bush, well, actually, as he calls it, forest or jungle, because as everyone in Australia always calls it that. No, as we get our 
as he gets his little bit of bush and builds his house in there safe in the sovereign zone in and he's treated with the tribes and he's got everything he wants but all you've got to do is buy in the nightcap so that he keeps getting those finders fees and he'll learn himself one he probably already has so don't uh, be surprised if he moves out of the crow house well apparently I'm not going to confirm or deny what I found out but the fact that uh, I've been talking to um, Max Egan means that uh, I did find out a few truths it's the only reason he'd respond to you is if you speak a few truths because if you disagree with him <laughs> he's fine in fact, yeah. And if you're a woman, he'll call you dolls, darling, love. <laughs> he'll even give you a smile in between all that, you know, frowning and getting more wrinkles on his forehead with all that toxic talk about, you know, being enslaved and imprisoned in a system that he's never participated in and he's so free. Be like him. Yes, be like him. Make up a, f a fake name, make up a backstory, and then pretend to be that person. Yep. Be like Max Egan. I think I've said enough for today. I don't want to make this a two hour video. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, bye for now, and I'll put the rest together later.